guys, and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer board game review. Today's game up on the tabletop is called Quartermaster Apply Within by Slinky Gibbon Games. It is for two to four players, takes about mm, 40 minutes to play, and is for ages, I'd say 12 and up. In the game Quartermaster, you're basically going to be playing a worker placement of sorts in which you're going to be making gadgets utilizing cubes, and cubes are found in this little bag here. You're going to be adding them to the board, taking them off of the board, taking them out of the bag, and basically putting them together and you're going to have certain requirements as to what type of blueprints you're going to have in the game. When you play a two, three, or four player game it changes the way the game is played depending on whether you're going to be adding additional parts that you can make or adding in different bonus rules or whether or not you're going to not be using those in different player games. And you're going to simply go throughout different rounds. Every round you'll be placing down your worker and taking the action until everybody has done so and then you're going to move this auditor's track down the board after it goes all the way off the board the game will end and you're going to check to see how well you did by placing certain pieces down the board will guarantee you certain points as long as you've made your blueprint with the specific types of colors however as the most points at the end of the game is the winner okay let's go ahead and take a look down below at quartermaster and we will apply within so here we have Quartermaster Apply Within. As you can see, I set it up for four players, and the game changes based on the number of players. With two players, it's longer, and three players as well. But it'll be determining whether or not you're gonna be using either one side of these, all sides of these little pieces, or whether or not you're going to be using none of them. And in which case, these guys are basically either gonna be used as bonus points, or they're gonna be used as multiple spaces you can place when deciding what workers to place on the board and where. After you've given everybody two of these pieces, they're going to select one of them all, uh, and, and keep it, along with potentially selecting two of these pieces and selecting one of them as well. In a four-player game, you don't do that, however. You're also going to get a ID, which gives you a specific color, as, long, as well as a meeple or a worker. And you're going to be then having your own little area where you're going to be making your gadget. You're also going to set the auditor's piece right on the first lab of the little... Uh, I guess this little belt here, and setting aside your little tokens here, along with your little um, random intern, and of course these die here, which you can use to add additional players in the game. And the game is pretty much all set up. You're going to be getting the different pieces attached, along with the different interns and die, as well as the box and, of course, the rule book. So that's how you set it up, along with having a bunch of tokens, or I guess these are little cubes in this bag. Let's go ahead and show you how to play the game. So now that everybody has selected their blueprint, as well as their ID, and taken their worker, and they've also set up the board here, and this is for four players, because there's four down here, make sure that you have your temporary intern over here. you got your eddy tokens that you could use to prevent players from messing with you and the die that you're probably not going to use for right now because this is for additional players if you want to add them in the game. Make sure that your bag is full of all of the cubes and these cubes are, cubes are going to range in color and make sure they're all mixed up along with putting two on here randomly. Now, as you can see, each player has a blueprint. Now, generally, they're going to be face down, so nobody except for the player knows what their blueprint is, but so that you get an idea of how the game works, I'm going to reveal these two. At the end of the game, your objective is going to be to make this specific gadget. Now, this player makes this one, and this player makes this one. And if you can make them of the same colors, you're going to score double points for each of them. And the blue ones here are actually going to be scored uh, as wild, so they're not going to give you doubles, but you can put any of them there that you'd like. And it tells you the value of each of the cubes. The black is the most expensive, because it's a classy cube, and the reckless one, which is white, is worth the least, which is one. At the beginning of the game, it's pretty simple. Take your auditors and place it on the first tile, and then begin by selecting the player to go first. And the way that is selected is by this little security clearance area here. So green is going to begin. And remember, green needs this shape, and yellow needs this shape. So we'll go ahead and put them face down now. Um, we'll, I'll leave this one here so you guys can see it, though. So green's going to go ahead and select. Now, he needs two blacks, a white, and uh, you can take any, any color for those two. So he can go ahead and place his worker on the HQ area right here. And this one says you can draw a random part. Whenever you draw a random part, you draw it from the bag. Hopefully he'll get a good one. And he got an orange. And then he also gets to take one of these, and he'll take a black one. So he's going to place his black first, and that begins his gadget. And then he's going to place an orange here. And hopefully the black will represent this one here, and the orange will represent this one here. That way he gets as many points as possible. 
After that, the next player is going to be red, and we're going to go ahead and select anyone he wants. Remember, this is what he's trying to make, which is actually a rather large and or more difficult one. Um, but he's going to go for, let's see what he wants to do. He can choose to discard a part and draw two of his choice. He can draw two random parts. He can't place here because somebody's already here now. And also, when he takes one of these, this gets refilled. Okay. Uh, this can let you get this little intern, which will allow you to go last again and use him. And also that you have a random part. This will let you have an eddy. These things prevent players from messing with you, and you can use them by flipping them. And if the, you get red, that means it's no good and it doesn't work, and you get to keep it and try again later. If it's green, then it works, it prevents them, and you get to discard this. We'll go with drawing two random ones, though. So uh, let's see here. Come on, red. Give me two random good ones. Red's got these two. And we'll go ahead and start the part off. We'll have this one here representing this one and then unfortunately have this one here maybe we can move it or get rid of it at some point later um, and you could probably find a better combination as to how you want to do it like that then the next player is going to be blue and blue is going to go ahead and decide hmm he could be mean make all other players lose a part or you could choose a player to discard a part and then he draws a part at random or you can draw one part of his choice uh, hmm we'll go ahead and take this one here so that means he's going to get his intern here which is nice because you can use it at the end of the round. And he also takes a part at random. And he'll start by placing this here and representing that one there. And then he is done. And then finally yellow is going to get to take their turn. And yellow is going to go... Draw a part of your choice. So he's going to go in the bag. Pick a part of his choice. And he's looking for purple. And he'll place that right there. Not too bad. He got what he wanted at least. And then finally, we have this little intern. Uh, so he's going to get to go ahead and play something. Let's see what he wants to do. Uh, how about every other player discards a part? So every player is going to lose a part. That's really painful. And these, when you discard them, they go back into the bag here. After that, this little intern here, he's going to go back on the board here. And everybody is going to go ahead and take their pieces back and place them on to their locations. After that is done, this is going to move down one. And that opens up a whole new area of the lab in which you can utilize these ones. Drawing through random parts, choose a player to draw one random part, swap one of your parts for one part of your choice from the bag, and then take a part from another player. All players may rearrange their gadgets. And there's certain rules as to how you can arrange and rearrange them. And now we begin with the new player order, which means blue gets to go first. So blue is going to go ahead and draw three. That's pretty useful, right? And then uh, choose a player to draw a random part. So we'll choose yellow because he has the least amount of parts and he can draw a random part as well. And then they're going to go ahead and look. Yellow will take that purple just like he normally would. And then he's going to place his parts just like this. So he's forming his little widget or gadget, as you can see. Then the next player is going to be yellow, and yellow is going to go ahead and decide to draw two random parts because he needs parts as badly as he possibly can. He gets two of them, uh, and we'll do it like that so that we have this one and this one covered. And then the next player is going to be green, and green's going to go ahead and, hmm, what does he want to do? This one. He'll draw a random part, and then he'll place it. And then he'll take a part from here, and he'll place it. And then the next player is going to be red. Red's going to go, and he could do a lot of things. Maybe he'll just draw a part of his choice, which will let him get black, because that's definitely the one he wants. If there is any black available, and there is, that's useful. So red or orange is up here now, and then the black is next. So you're trying to make your gadget as best as possible. And the rules are pretty simple. You have to make sure that they're adjacent to each other and connected. Okay, and after that, everybody has got a chance to go, in which case these are all going to come back to their players once again. And the next round is going to begin, in which case uh, this is going to move again and form a new set of who is going to be taking the turns in what order. Eventually, as this thing goes all the way to the end here, 
This is gonna be removed and put back into the bag. If ever at any point there are, two, are no cubes left in this bag, you just use whatever you have. And then also use the security clearance of the top one here at this point. This will come off and the game will end. Then everybody's going to flip over, revealing exactly what they have and trying to uh, score points as best they can. And you're gonna get points in many different ways. First of all, A, did you complete your blueprint? If you did, by completing exactly as it is shown, you'll score five. Anything that matches in color will score double points. Anytime you get three of a kind, meaning you have three of the same color, in your uh, blueprint, you're gonna score three points. And if you have a hidden feature, which are these guys here, you'll score them as well. Um, additionally, you'll score points for each one. Now, let's say for instance, that this player here did complete his shape. So I'll show you one point of scoring and it looks something like this. And then he had uh, these here as well. Basically what's gonna happen is he's going to have to remove pieces that don't match the blueprint. So in this case, he could choose to remove these and that would be basically the same shape as that one. And then he's going to score and he would look at the, um, he, he reorganized it, I guess, in a way to which you would see it on the blueprint there. And he's gonna score one point for Reckless and it's also a double. He would score uh, one point here. He would score three points here. He'd score five here and then he'd score two here. He doesn't have any three of a kinds and he only had one match for the double and he did complete the shape, so I'd give him a bonus of plus five. Everybody else would do the same, and whoever has the most points at the end of the game of Quartermaster is the winner. Fairly simple, pretty straightforward worker placement that all fits in a really tiny box. All right, let's talk about it. Okay, so let's talk about some caveats first. And the first thing is, depending on the number of players, whether or not you're gonna get hidden features. And these hidden features are gonna have colors and a shape. And if that shape is attached to your blueprint or in your blueprint, it'll score you points. And it has specific colors that has to match with it. Some of the games will have it and some won't, but depending on the number of players. The intern is great because it gives you an extra action, but it's at the cost of waiting until everybody else has had their choice of actions. So yes, you do, but maybe that will be the best, just depending on how players choose and pick and depending on what you want. And the Eddie tokens, these little, uh, I guess they're little rubber ducky type looking things here, are great. When you select them, you get to take them. At any point somebody tries to mess with your blueprint, you'll flip it. And if it lands green, that means that you've stopped them and you have to discard your token. If it lands red, that means that you have not stopped them and you get your token back to try again at another point. If you're going to discard a, to uh, a gadget piece from your gadget, if you're going to discard a cube from your gadget, you have to make sure that it doesn't break your gadget. There's certain rules for placement and certain rules for not breaking them. For instance, if you have a line, you can't simply pull one off the middle and create two gadgets. It all has to be connected as one. And at the end of the game, regardless of whether you finish the gadget or not, you're going to score points based on how you've made the gadget and pull them off based on how it's aligned. So do your best to make the best gadget you can that follows the, the rules of play. Additionally too, anything you end up not using for a blueprint will turn into a lab, which will give you a specific action, which is kind of interesting because the game's gonna play differently every time. You have different blueprints and different actions to take as you play the game, which is kind of nice. It's a very small, compact style worker placement. Another thing to note too is the, the, the mode of uh, how players are gonna take their turns is gonna differ depending on which pieces of these are going to be located uh, to be able to place down your workers. So that also changes the game as well. And even the hidden features, these will be there or they won't be there depending on the number of players. But when they are there, they give you an additional action in some way. Some of them are gonna hurt other players, but they don't help you and others will help you really well, but they're not gonna hurt anybody. You can play as passively as you want in the game or as aggressively as you want. It feels good making those gadgets. I really enjoy that aspect of the game, putting them down and trying to formulate the best you possibly can. Now you limit yourself if you choose to make a gadget that you know you can create, or at the same time as if you get something too big uh, that requires too much, you may fail to make that and thus they lose more points than just going for the smaller ones, which is nice that it gives you the option as to choosing between two of them at the very beginning of the game with two separate gadgets. Some of them are actually a little larger, some of them require different colors, but scoring double points on those black cubes, the ones that are called classy, that is really useful, really good, but can you hold it? Will players even allow you to? Do they know what type of shape you have? That comes with the more that you play the game, the better you get aligned with what types of shapes there are. And you can determine this player is trying to make this shape most likely. I'm going to pull this one off of him. I'm going to make him lose this piece of, off of his, off of his uh, gadget. In which case, now he's going to be not making that gadget and scoring less points. The game is fairly close throughout the entire thing. And all the abilities feel pretty reasonably fair. Uh, some of them are a little better than others, but that comes with who gets to play first and whether somebody gets the intern or not. So you kind of make your own 
failure in this game. You kind of it, you kind of create your own failure in this game when you don't place when you need to place at the beginning. And also be aware, this player needs this and this player is likely to need this. Uh, I am going to have to do this in order to succeed in this game. It's quick, it's fun, it's a little worker placement game. It reminds me of those Mint 10 games by 524 Labs. And if you like those style games, that style worker placement, you're going to really dig this game as well. It fits really small. I'm actually kind of curious to see what kind of box this is going to be in because it won't need a huge ba box actually. The only thing it's going to need is a bag to fit all the cubes in but if you can make it even tinier that'd be kind of cool because the game fits in a, it could fit pretty small i like that aspect another cool thing too is it allows you to play with other players utilizing these die here and how you roll the die is going to determine what that player is going to do in the game so it adds another unique feature with just three simple die that's super sweet as well Overall, I really dug this game. I had a lot of fun with it. It's a game you can play over and over again really quickly. It's a game that's a gateway game for beginners, for worker placement, and everything makes sense on your board as you see it. The only complication, I guess, maybe, is the fact that there are some blue squares that are, I think, wild. I'm imagining they just count for any. You can place them anywhere, but you don't get the double points. Uh, we had a little bit of trouble with the squaring at the beginning, but once we figured it all out, it made it made sense. And with this review, I think you won't have a problem. But for some reason, it wasn't clicking until the very end there. And additionally, uh, having to create certain of these shapes, it, you have to be careful which ones you pick, basically. But that is kind of on me, so I, I can't give it a negative in that aspect. Overall, a lovely game. Really, really enjoyed this one. Definitely one to take a look at. If you like small worker placements, Quartermaster, apply within. Take a look down below in the description if you think this is a game for you. And let me know in the comments whether or not something you've played, something you'd be interested in playing, or something that's just not really for you. Alright guys, thanks so much, and let's go to the outro. Alright guys, thanks for watching another Unfiltered Gamer board game review. If you like this video, go check out those other videos here on YouTube. Like, subscribe, and comment. It helps. We really appreciate it. As well as taking a look at Quartermaster, Apply Within. I like, this is something I missed out, missed out on explaining. I like how it all comes together too. I love it when a plan comes together and how you can attach all these together. That's so cool how they intricate, it made this so intricate that you can put it all together and then you also utilize these for the players and for the game board or for the game board or you don't and every way you play two, three, and four players, it all works, right? Even a two player game functions. It just functions differently and that's fun about this game. Also, check our website, unfilteredgamer.com. We're giving away two games right now, Bloodborne, and DD starter set oh, and dogs three games as well as checking out our friends everythingboardgames.com and the giveaway geek they give away a ton of great stuff as well we're partnered with them for those giveaways all right guys that's all i got for you this time as always i look forward to having you apply within <laughs>